What's up guys, today we're going to be having a look at two watches that have just become part of my collection. These are the Richard Legrand Odyssey Mark II here on the right. And on the left we have the G Gerlach, this is the Enigma Model 2. Now, these watches are both under $500, however there is a bit of a price difference between them. The Richard Legrand is sitting at $299 last time I checked, and the Enigma version 2 is $460. Now you'll have to excuse the background noise you can hear, there's construction going on outside of the house. But anyways, these are two watches that I really, really like. I think that for the price, you're getting excellent value. You're getting excellent quality. They're absolutely beautiful watches. So I just wanted to make a comparison and run down through the specs and see which one I'd recommend over the other. So let's start off with the Richard Legrand. Now, this watch, as you can see, comes with a sapphire insert in the bezel, which makes it highly, highly reflective. It kind of looks ceramic at first glance, but it is a sapphire insert. Really, really good looking watch. And the dial has a sunburst effect, so it's not just a flat black color. So it plays with the light really, really well. Also, the dial is made of ceramic, so that just adds to the quality and to the glossiness of this watch. I think this watch works really well as a bit of a... Um, a play between a casual to dress watch. I think that you could definitely get away with using this with a suit, especially because it's a pretty small size. And with the lugs being so small at 20 millimeters and with a nice amount of tapering on either side, this watch plays really conservatively, even though it does have quite a lot of wrist presence. Now, some things I really like about this watch. Obviously, we have a design that's inspired by the Blanc Pound 50 Fathoms, especially with, for example, the vessel. Personally, I'm not that much of a fan of a dot at the 12 on the bezel rather than a pyramid. I think that the pyramid would have probably worked a bit better. However, I do understand what they were going for. They were going for more of a more of a classic kind of dressy look than just your average a diver sporty watch. Now, another thing that isn't personally a, to my to my standards, even though I say that taking into account the fact that this watch is pretty cheap, I mean $299, I still think that you're getting a lot of value for the watch. But let's get the negative aspects out of the way first. Now, the indices are pretty pretty much nothing special. I mean, they're just painted on. They've got a good amount of loom, and the loom on this watch is quite nice. It's a blue loom, um, and you have, I can't show you now because I've got bright lights in front of me, but you do have loom even on the bezel because of that sapphire insert, so it does look really nice in the dark. Um, however, uh, the indices, personally, I would have liked to see maybe some chrome edges. I think that maybe could have looked well. Um, but, I mean, at the end of the day, you have to take into account that they were going for more of a minimalist view, more of a kind of a dressy look, and I understand what they did and why they didn't put those chromed out edges. However, personally, I would have preferred to see them. Uh, I'm not too sure about the size of their numerals. I mean, uh, the three, the six, the nine, uh, and the 12. I think that, I think maybe they could have been just a tiny, tiny bit bigger. I mean, it's not that it looks bad, it's just that if I'm looking at things that I could criticize and either maybe like it to be just maybe one point bigger, I think that would have filled in the gap and made it more of a center part, especially because the rests are just indices and not the actual numerals. So I think they could have gotten away with making them just a tiny, tiny bit bigger. Now, one of the things that I absolutely hate about this watch is the bracelet. Now, not necessarily because it's a bad bracelet, because it's not. I mean, it does feel cheap. It feels like the kind of bracelet that you can pick up for about $20. I mean, it, it feels like a cheap bracelet. It has, it has a decent amount of, of fluidity. I mean, it's not terrible. I haven't had any problems with it pinching or anything, although the sides are quite sharp. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just a cheap bracelet. But a cheap bracelet wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing, especially because the watch itself is pretty cheap. But the problem is that this has been the bracelet that has taken me the longest to be able to adjust. It took me so long that, as you can see, 
I decided to just pull all the links out on one side just to spare myself some time and not having to do it on either side to keep it symmetrical with the buckle. So at the moment I've got one end that's a lot longer than the other one, but I mean, I, I rather have that than the pain of having to actually take the pins out. They're extremely, extremely difficult to take out. I even cut my finger, as you can see right there, trying to, to get one of the pins out. So yeah, I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. I'm not sure what happened. I'm not sure if they put too much Loctite in there. I'm not sure what it is, but it's just extremely hard to get the pins out. Now, uh, the buckle has the Richard Legrand logo in uh, landscape, which I think looks really good. It's something I don't see on that many watches, so I do appreciate the way they put it in landscape rather than the typical uh, uh, vertical uh, setting that most watches have. The clasp is perfectly decent. I mean, it's not terrible. I've seen uh, way worse clasps on uh, watches that are twice the price. I'm looking at you, Seiko. Um, so yeah, the clasp is per per perfectly reasonable. It's just that this bracelet is one that I'm going to be swapping out tomorrow as soon as a, a leather um, a strap with a deployment clasp that I ordered gets here. Because I think personally that it's going to look really good on a black leather strap, especially with how classic they've gone for the dial. Uh, now, moving on to what I like about this watch, because there is quite a lot that I like about the watch. Obviously, <laughs> that's why I'm keeping it in my collection. First, as I mentioned, you have high quality materials being used. You have the sapphire insert on the vessel. You have the ceramic dial with the sunburst effect. They also have the blue version of this as a sunburst dial that I think looks really, really good. However, having the Oris Aquis and the Hamilton Frogman and a few other watches with a sunburst blue dial. I wanted to get something a bit different. Um, now, something that I really, really appreciate is the fact that they made the seconds hand reach all the way out to pretty much the centers, the edges of the of the inside of the dial. I think that adds a lot of elegance to, to the watch. Personally, I don't like a classic like dress watches that have short seconds hand. I think it kind of ruins the whole the whole mysticism of a watch like this. So I really appreciate the fact that they decided to stretch out that seconds hand. Also it has a really nice shape, a really nice design, and a good amount of loom on it. Maybe I would have liked to see a counterbalance on the edge of it, but that's no big deal. Then you have these kind of Washington Monument uh, hands for the hour and the minutes. A uh, pretty nice, uh, sharp looking with the chromed out edges. Then you have a signed crown with a um, uh, polished finish, very nice looking. I also like the fact that they've gone for the more classic crown without the crown guards. The crown actuation is pretty gritty. I mean, at the end of the day, this does have a pretty uh, run of the mill movement with the Se Seiko NH35. Um, however, I, I feel like maybe this crown needs a bit more lubrication. I'm not sure, but it does feel a bit gritty when you're actually working it. But nothing too dramatic, nothing too terrible. It does have a screw down crown. Um, so yeah, one of my favorite points of this watch, visually speaking, is the case back. Now that case back, as you can see, let's see if we can actually focus on this. There we go. Let's see. Okay. So I'm, okay, there we go. So the case back is a kind of a scuba helmet with the anchors on the sides. Really, really nice. Reminiscent of like an Omega Seamaster case back. Um, very well done, very well executed, a deep, deep stamping of the logo. And then you have the polished top with a, what seems to be a sandblasted uh, back. Really nice, really well made. Also, one of the things that I appreciate about this watch, as I said, it does have very, very small lugs. So most of the wrist presents come directly from the actual watch face itself. And that's a good thing because once again, they've gone for that minimalist view. So I, I don't really want anything getting in the way, which is one of the main reasons why I'm changing out the metal bracelet for a leather strap. So yeah, I mean, overall $299, you've got a solid movement that's gonna last you years without having to service it. You've got high quality materials. You've got a really good finishing, minimalist classic look. You've got a versatile watch that can be used for a variety of different different scenarios and different uh, um, 
different types of, of, of dress wear so I mean personally there's not much to dislike about this watch you have some polished edges there with a mixture of different uh, different finishing on the case you have brushed on the sides and then polished just on the edges of the lugs so yeah a very nice looking piece and I think that for $299 you're getting a lot for your money now let's go into the G Gerlach Enigma 2 now this is an absolute beauty of a watch. Uh, personally, as soon as I saw it, I knew that I had to have this in my collection. Uh, I've gone once again for the black on black. I think it looks really good. I've changed it out for a rubber strap. The original straps that came with this watch were these. They are perfectly, let's see if we can focus. Come oh, on. Okay. These straps are perfectly good. I mean, they've got leather on the inside and what seems to be like a cordura fabric on the outside and it's got a sign buckle right off center which I really like um, there's nothing wrong with these straps it's just that I don't really I, I, I personally thought that plain black uh, straps went better with it so I've got it on rubber straps at the moment now with this watch you get the Seiko NH37 movement and it does come with a day date complication as you'll be able to see when my camera actually manages to focus okay there you can see it it's got a ceramic bezel really nice looking I mean right off the bat this watch looks I'd say more expensive than what it is it's coming in at $450 and you have applied indices with highly chromed edges and then you have the um, um, the luminescence right in the center the luminescence on this watch is excellent once again you've got um, luminous paint on the bezel as well so the bezel will light up also uh, i really like the yellow on the seconds and how they kept it simple i think this is like the kind of like the opposite of the design cue that uh, the Richard Legrand was going for. Uh, I think that this one went for a more sporty look. As you can see, there's uh, indices for the minutes by five, by increments of five on the inside, just ever so small in yellow. You also have the made in Poland at the bottom, which I'm not sure you'll be able to see. Um, plain black background, but I think it works really well with the whole uh, with the whole design of the dial. Personally, I think this one looks a lot better than the white version that they have, the white dial version. You have the little day-date window on the side with highly polished chrome edges. Then you have a minimalist approach to the amount of text on the dial, which is always a good thing. You have just the logo at the top. Maybe I would have liked to see the logo being applied rather than just painted on. That's just a minor gripe with it. Then at the bottom you have automatic in Polish and then the level of depth you can take this watch into. Now, it, what's something that I also like on this watch is that it has a slightly domed crystal, ever so slightly domed crystal as you can see. Um, a very, very thin uh, watch if you take into account that it looks quite chunky from the front. I mean, it looks like it has kind of like a um, Seiko uh, Paddy Turtle kind of case a bit square on the edges but then it's kind of rounded off by the fact that they have given the case back a kind of a contour that adapts to your wrist really nicely it makes it really comfortable to use and also you have a case back uh, pretty nice with the enigma on it and kind of like a, a radial brushing that makes it makes it catch the light very very well i think it looks really nice even though it's quite a quite a simple case back um, you have a signed crown engraving is pretty good on it not as deep as the Richard Legrand but it's pretty good polished engraved with the girl like logo you have all brushed case there's no polish on the case whatsoever you have polished edges on the bezel now one of my problems with this watch is that the bezel is what I would consider to be terrible I mean the bezel let's see if you can hear this now, not only does it not really have any kind of distinct click, which makes me think that it's not that good of a bezel, um, but it also doesn't line up perfectly with the indices. So let's see if I can try and show you that. Okay, so I can either have it off-centered to one side or to the other. I mean, let's see, okay, here's a better example. So I can either have it there or I can have it slightly off-centered to the other side so it's not properly lined up 
with the indices, which is always a shame. Although with this vessel, it's not really that big of a problem because you don't have really any any center part on this on this vessel. You don't have any dots or any pyramid or any anything. So I mean, you could you could basically use it like that, and it wouldn't really look off. So that's not really that big of an issue. However, it always shows uh, um, an extra touch of quality that uh, watch companies make sure that their vessels line up with the indices. Um, however, as I said, I mean, this watch, uh, what you're getting for the price is once again uh, very good. Also made in Poland, a uh, very high quality finishing of the case, a uh, very robust feeling. The presentation box it comes in is a wooden box that's kind of reminiscent of the Omega boxes. Very nice box. Um, personally, I think that this is probably going to be for a, a very different occasion than the Richard Legrand would be. I mean, personally, this is the one that I take out for just a casual day when I'm just uh, uh, not dressed up or anything. This would be more like my sports watch. This would be a watch I'd actually go swimming with. Whereas the Richard Legrand, it doesn't really speak to me as a sports watch. Even though it's a diver's watch, even though it's water resistant to, let's see, to three, 200 meters, it doesn't really speak to me as a diver's watch. It's more of a dress watch, in my opinion, and that is mainly because of the 50 Fathoms kind of homage-esque look. So personally, I think the two different watches for different occasions, and obviously uh -huh. depending on which kind of watches you like more, you're probably gonna have a preference over one or the other. However, in this, in the sense of, of uh, quality, of build, of uh, finishing, of uh, materials used, you both got uh, pretty much the same movement with the Seiko 35 and 36. Um, I mean, there's not really much between them. There's not really much of a difference between these two watches. So, that's my dog in the background trying to be in the video once I get involved in the review. So, I mean, at the end of the day, could I justify the extra $160 for the G Gerlach when you could get this one for just $299? Um, as I said, I mean, it depends. It depends on what you're looking for a watch for. If you actually want a watch that you can kind of use as an everyday beater, as a sports watch, I'd probably go with this one, just because it feels more robust. I mean, it feels like it could take more of a beating than the Richard Legrand does. Uh, however, if you want a very, very inexpensive watch that can be used both for a, kind of a sporty occasion, both as like a beater, I mean, you could use this watch as a beater. Uh, I think it's a bit too glossy for that, but you could, you could do, by all means. Um, but as I said, I see this more as being a, a, a formal watch. Uh, now, obviously, some people will be able to will, will, will disagree on that, but that's personally how I see it. So, I mean, could I recommend an extra $150 for the girl? Like, probably not. Probably not. Probably I'd have to I'd have to give it to the Richard Legrand Odyssey 2. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think that you're getting excellent, excellent value for money. If I were you and I were to pick up this watch, again, I would do what I've done and I would just throw out this bracelet, just throw it in a box somewhere and just pick up either a nice leather strap or go for maybe like a shark mesh kind of a, a bracelet, a Milanese uh, bracelet, which is the one I'm going to be putting on the Gerlach in a couple of days as soon as it gets here. I think that the that a, a shark mesh uh, stainless steel bracelet is going to look really good on, on this Enigma 2. And on the website, you can actually see that they have two different uh, variations uh, to how they ship it out. One is with the um, fabric strap that I just showed you, and the other one is with a Milanese. So personally, I like how it looks on the Milanese a bit more. Um, but yeah, I mean, once again, with this watch, you're also getting what I think is quite good value for money. I mean, for the $450 range, you do have a lot more competition. You're coming into the same kind of a territory as the Hamilton Frogman, which I just acquired a few days ago. And personally, I think that the Frogman is a better watch than this one, not just for the movement, but also for the uh, quality of the finish. And obviously you have a big brand behind it. However, however, Considering that this is from a micro brand, I am very, very impressed with the execution of this watch. I'm very impressed with what they've been able to produce. And I think that 
for $460, you're doing pretty well. Getting this watch, you're doing pretty well. I mean, I personally don't have any problem with the price. I think it's priced well, especially considering that it's made in Poland, whereas the Richard Legrand is made in Singapore. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that just depends on personal taste. Both of these watches, I like them a lot. So with either one of these, you're not gonna go wrong. They're gonna be definitely good pieces to add to pretty much anyone's collection. Now, that's gonna be it for this video. Also, I'm gonna show you the best selection before going, as I showed on the Gerlach, but not on the Odyssey. So, best selection on the Odyssey is infinitely better. Infinitely better. You have a really nice sounding click smooth action it's a lot easier to grip on to this bezel than it is to the Gerlach and that is due to the fact that the Gerlach has a much lower profile and has kind of more slippery edges more of a of a slippery coin edge than this one has this one has more aggressive edges kind of kind of a bit more reminiscent to the bezel of a Tudor Black Bay for example and that's one of my favorite bezels to actually work I think it's extremely comfortable and extremely easy to adjust so yeah, I mean, definitely in the Bessel department, the Odyssey Mark II wins that one, hands down. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this comparison. Till the next time, peace.